Good morning, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and get started. If anyone else comes on, that's fine. They can just pop in. Um, so our webinar um, today <clears throat> is on based on auto or Doma Arigato. So we are going to be talking about a whole bunch of um, things you can do with OnBase that can happen automatically that you don't have to physically um, be touching for these things to um, get processed, um, indexed, retrieval, some different things. Um, all right, well here's our, here's actually an old picture, but our group, um, we are, our support group, is, we're now called the Customer Care Group, and um, Andy and I are going to be giving this presentation today. Hello. Um, and just like always, um, you, the audience is muted. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box. We will um, take questions at the end. And then at the end, you will be um, asked to complete a survey. And we use those surveys to um, create the information for the, preview, or the next webinars. So please feel free to give us um, your feedback, because we use that to, um, for the webinars and also um, for like, our customer. Uh, we'd like to get a, an idea of what our customers are looking for in terms of uh, training and knowledge sharing. Yep, and we do have our um, user conference coming up, and some of those topics may be included there, too. If it's a little too long to fit in a webinar, we'll yep. probably push it off to the user conference. Yep. All right, so our agenda. So today we're going um, to talk about processing and using the scheduler to run your processing. We're going to talk about some indexing, um, things you can do within indexing to um, automate or make it faster. We're going to talk about retrieval and workflow. So processing, we're going to start with scan and index because that's the most, um, well, the, what most of our customers use to bring documents into Office. So as you are well aware, scanning and then indexing is not really that automatic. But you can do what's called, um, you can schedule sweeps and you can schedule scan from disks. So um, if you are sweeping the same directory every day at 2 o'clock, you can set that up or schedule that to sweep that directory for you, and you don't have to do that part manually. Um, you can also do a scan from disk, which the scan from disk technology uses um, COFAX, um, so if you're looking to pull in barcodes or something from that data, you would use a scan from disk, and that would automatically bring those in and read those barcodes. So that allows you to bring in, not only automatically bring in documents that say image files that are residing on your network shares or somewhere, you know, that are being dropped in there by other users, but then scan from disk also allows you to, as Jen mentioned, read the barcodes and then automatically index based on those barcodes. Yeah. And we'll cover that later in the indexing part. And then there's cold. Um, cold is a very classic form of bringing documents. Um, it's one of the first processes that um, came with Omnis. And um, a lot of people use cold for bringing in um, text format. So maybe um, you have a long string of uh, invoices that are all in um, a text string. So the cold process then allows you to break those up into individual, um, in, you know, individual Document. documents. Uh, lost the word for a second. <laughs> and then you could then, in some cases, people use uh, overlays to put over the top that maybe has, you know, to pretty it up a bit with your logo and those things because it is straight text. It's yeah. not a picture. Company logos, watermarks. Uh, it's funny that they're called overlays because they actually end up sitting under the text. But yeah, and we can go into that in more detail in the cold slide that's coming up here. Yep, and then PDF input filter um, is based off of cold. It's the same, um, using the same technology, but it is actually, um, you use a, a PDF document that is searchable, 
and you can then drag and drop boxes over um, keywords and information that you want it to um, use to parse the pages and also determine the document type and um, what the keywords are. So that does basically all in one swoop. It will do all of your um, parsing the pages and indexing at one time and you don't have to um, touch them at all. So if you have, say, for example, we will print here a PDF document that has 40 invoices in it. So we now have 40 one-page PDF documents that are indexed um, with the invoice number and then, um, which I will go into further, but we use an autofill to fill the rest of the information. Then there's DIP. Um, a lot of you are using DIP. Um, document import process. So this uses a meta file, um, text metadata file, that has the information um, of the keywords that are assigned to each PDF image, depending on what you're trying to bring in. DIP's a little more complicated, but DIP can do more things. So we'll get into that too yep. in the DIP slide. And then DRIP, which is um, directory import processing, and basically that is the same concept, but using a directory structure versus a document structure. So um, processing with, sque with sweeping, um, you can import the batches um, that are already out on a folder somewhere. Um, you don't, uh, maybe you're using a multifunction device to scan them to a network location. You can bring them in, and, and this can be scheduled so it happens automatically. And um, you can bring in any kinds of documents with a sweep. Um, so you can bring in PDFs, images, um, anything that you may have out there. So it's useful for, say, if you want to import uh, e-forms or uh, Word documents, you know, things that don't easily translate into the other uh, import formats like cold or scan from disk. Yeah. Now your scan from disk is going to bring in images. So these will be documents that if, if, if you're scanning from a multifunction device and you're putting them out there, they're probably already in the um, image file format. Um, we actually have a customer that scans all over the state and then they have all those documents saved to one location and they bring them in through scan from disk and then they read a barcode, and then that barcode imports all the data. So nobody actually has to touch these documents. So barcode detection, patch code separation, this can all be used from scan from disk um, because you are using whatever technology you're using to read barcodes, whether you're using the on-base barcode technology or COPEX to read barcodes. So if you are using COPEX VRS, then obviously it requires VRS. Um, this customer that I was just referring to, they use Barcode Recognition Server from OnBase. So it, you, it runs through that process, which can also be set up automatically and scheduled. And so it automatically reads the barcodes that way. And like I said, it only supports image file format. And then cold. So, like I was saying before, cold is your, you know, using text files, um, large text files in a lot of cases. Um, and it separates them out um, either obviously by pages or um, by documents. So maybe you have an invoice that's five pages, and then you have another invoice that's one page. It will use something on that. Um, screen to differentiate the next page. So maybe you have page one at the top of every first page of your document. And, and in a lot of cases, this is what a customer customers usually do, is they'll use page one as their separator. So every time the process sees a page one, that became, becomes a new document. 
Yeah, you can set it up for, uh, you know, if, if you have a system that puts out a form feed character, you can you can latch onto the form feed character. Um, or like, if your system puts out end of report at the end of each document or something like that, you can you can basically use whatever text you want that shows up repeatedly in the in the document to signify the end of an individual document inside the gigantic text file. Yeah, or the beginning of a document. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're stored um, independent, and you just when you retrieve them, you would obviously retrieve, like say, on invoice number, it would just bring back that invoice number, not the whole string of text that it came in with. It's very smart about that. If you have a 400 megabyte text file and you're just looking for one invoice in the middle of it, it'll only bring back the text in the middle of that file, file. and not bring back the entire file over your network. Yeah. and bring it to a crawl. <laughs> <laughs> um, and these can be scheduled to run on a regular basis. Um, just like most of the stuff, which I will get into at the end of all of our processing, um, everything can be scheduled to run. And um, that way, it's automatic, and you don't have to touch it every day. You only have to touch it in that one instance that something maybe happened, and there's a network glitch or something. It doesn't process correctly. So glitches are a way of life. <laughs> are they? It breaks the glitches. Yep. Um, PDF input filter is another uh, process that's done through Coles. Um, this is not run around as long as Coles, but it is um, a great product because more and more people are bringing in PDF documents into their system. And um, this allows you to bring in, just like Cole does with text, large, uh, allows you to bring in a very large PDF document and have it broken down. Broken down. So maybe um, you have W2s, you know, your company's W2s. You can have those broken out. Or maybe you are sending out insurance notices. You could have it bro mm. broken out. Um, so that you can you have all this documentation and it's only each person's um, piece of that file. And in this case, it's a little bit different than Cole's because Cole keeps the text file the way it is and then just brings back whatever you request. As far as PDF input filter, it actually parses them into separate documents. So they are saved on the disk group as separate documents. So Obviously, if you bring in a very large document that has, you know, 500 one-page images or five, you know, 500 one-page documents, they are now one-page documents. So when you try to pull up one of those pages, it's much faster than trying to bring in the whole thing. And, you know, the the beauty of this is that you do not have to physically if you were to bring this in, say, through Sweep, you would have to create new document on every page because it would come in as one big, large document. Whereas this process separates them automatically so that you do not have to do any of that manual. Yeah, if you're working with large PDFs like this, um, if you were trying to do it with Sweep, I mean, you could. You'd bring in the file, and you know you'd have your sweep or scan from disk set to uh, to break on the on a new page. You'd have your 500 page, you know, or say 600 page PDF file with a four page report and a two page report and a three page report and an eight page report. Well, now you actually have 600 one page documents that you now have to manually go through and rejoin all the correct pages. And thankfully, your PDF input filter does it for you. It's really yeah, very convenient that way. So, and um, any of your reports or statements, um, statements is probably the best way that this could be used if you have statements that you're sending out to a bunch of customers. Um, you Generally, you would have one PDF file and, you know, each page is its own. This would be very easy to parse out. And it can be scheduled just like cold and just like scan from disk and sweeping. Yep. 
any of these other processes can all be scheduled. Yep, so if you have a scheduled report generator, it's really easy to just schedule your, your PDF input filter process right after the report generator runs. Piece of cake. Yep. So, um, and you can all schedule these to run at night if, um, if you have a lot of people on your system during the day and maybe you don't want to do that processing. The um, ability to do this at night um, is very good for the system or on a weekend and if you have very large documents. So then your import, uh, document import process, this also allows you to bring in, this allows you to bring in any type of document. So uh, DIP allows for PDFs, documents, Excel spreadsheets, you know, whatever type of PDFs, whatever type of documents you want to bring in. Images. Um, and this can also, like we said, been scheduled. And so basically what DIP does is um, when you create your DIP process or when you create the files that are going to go with DIP, you have a meta file, a text um, document that is also created. Now you can have a text document for each image or each PDF or each file that's in that directory, or you can have one very large text document that um, has data for all of the documents in it. So, for example, um, if you are processing these, you know, people are scanning them singly, you may have the, a metadata file for each one. And so in that file would be, you know, the document type, the, maybe the keywords, um, and then at the end, would be something that would differentiate for the name of the file or the path to the file. Or something like that is also entered in so that um, it knows what file goes with that metadata. So DIP is really powerful, but it's kind of dumb uh, in that it needs that, that index meta file to tell it what to do. Uh, and as Jen mentioned, you can have one file per image or document or one file per batch. Uh, but you have to have that file and you have to format it unless you run a preprocessor before it, which can be pretty much anything um, that can generate that file. But it needs to have that file. Yeah. You have to have your file name, you have to have uh, your file format, and then you can add whatever keywords you want to be indexed to that file. Those keywords will be applied to the document that's imported with the file. Yep. And there is a lot of systems out there that will create DIP file, you know, when you scan them, um, DIP files for you. Uh, like we do have a couple, couple customers that use Copax Capture to do their scanning, and then it will create a DIP file for them, and then they process the DIP into Omnix. Yep. So and you, can do, you can do your own custom scripting if you want. You can pay us to do custom scripting for it. it, it it's pretty flexible, actually. Omnibus will let you run pretty much whatever you want as a preprocessor on it, uh, or you can do a you know periodic processor that you schedule on your own on your own systems. As long as you have that indexing file, DIP will work and will work very well. Yeah. So now um, we're going to talk about directory import processors just a little bit because it's just like DIP, but it's for a larger number of documents and it's for a directory obviously, versus by document. So um, this gather, you know, gathers the index information um, configured in the directory structure. So this is configured a little bit differently. Um, there is an actual configuration utility that's used to configure DRIP. And um, so this is very, 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 very efficient if you have very, very large um, structures of directories that you want to bring documents in from, into OnBase from. If you have a lot of remote scanning sites and they all scan into a different folder based on, you know, where they are or their demographic region or, or anything like that, you can use DRIP to, to pull that information out of the directory structure itself. Mm -hmm. When it says, oh, I see this TIFF file in this directory over here, well, that gets this document type and it gets these keywords automatically, whereas this PDF file over here in this document or in this uh, directory 
this is from a different branch, so this gets a different document type because they only work on these kinds of documents, so it gets these keywords, and you can configure that all in uh, the drip configuration utility. And now the lovely scheduler. Um, this is a great utility, and um, I think almost everybody we have using OnBase uses this for something. Um, it is basically the fit client running as a service. So with that said, it is single threaded. So you need to keep that in mind. Um, if you schedule things to run, it probably makes sense to stagger them depending on what you're trying to run. Um, so when you go ahead and set up the scheduler, you'll, or each of your scheduled processes, you will come up with a day or days. So if you want it Monday through Friday to run at 2 o'clock, or Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock at night, or just Saturday and Sunday at 4 or whatever, or um, specific time or time range intervals. Um, for example, here we run a couple of our processes run from 8 to 5 every 120 minutes or every 2 hours. So every 2 hours we um, either run a cold PDF process or we commit batches. So, and we do a lot of um, committing of batches. So you can commit cold processes, you can commit dip, drip, um, scan from disk. All of that can be committed um, using a scheduled process. Um, also, batch scanning in Unity. Yeah, well, and keep in mind, in the Unity client, um, currently there is not the ability to commit from scan and index in the Unity client. So um, you could set up these committed batch uh, processes or scheduled processes to run, and then as those batches, as your users are using and scanning in Unity, you know, every couple hours or every hour, you can have those batches committed. Now, because, I mean, they're scanning them, they're already in copy one. So even if they're not committed for an hour, you can still see the data as soon as it's indexed. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about indexing and some different things you can do to automate indexing. So application able enabler is one way, which allows you to pull data from a third-party system and add it um, as values, keyword values, to documents that you import, scan, um, or if you're re-indexing them through workflow. You can um, pull all of that data in using App Enabler. Um, barcode indexing. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with barcodes, and there are a lot of times already on documents and already include information. So you can use the barcode, and maybe you use an autofill keyword set on top of a barcode. So you could have App Enabler or a barcode bring in an initial value, and then use an autofill keyword set to populate the rest of the information. Yeah, so say you have a, a vendor who comes in with a, a specific invoice number, and they always barcode their invoices with their with their vendor number, whatever that is, uh, you can grab that barcode and just automatically apply it to the autofill keyword set, and you get their vendor name and their address and their all their other information automatically applied to the document. Yeah, well, and here we just bring when we do um, PDF input filter, we the only value we read from PDF input filter is the invoice number, and then. We have an external autofill that goes out to our accounting software and pulls back all the rest of the information, like the vendor name and all that information. So we don't have to pull it in during the processing in case for some reason something changes on the accounting end, it's automatically pulled in correctly from accounting. And then I'm just, I'm just going to talk a little bit about advanced capture and any deck, which are um, newer pieces to the um, obvious, although any doc is 
a whole different uh, set of circumstances, but allows you to do a lot of wonderful things automatically um, with documents and um, not having to do so much indexing. So we're going to start with App Enabler. So if any of you have App Enabler already, um, basically what it does is we set up, you have a configuration utility that sets up a, um, a primary value that you, or a You copy what the screen looks like. So it, it will know, based on a bunch of values, that that screen is enabled. And then from there, you determine what values on that screen you want to be indexing off of. So maybe you want invoice number, vendor name, vendor number, amount, for example. Um, you would highlight or drag each of those areas in the configuration so it knows where on the screen that data is and then it will populate it when you press a value. So, for example, you could say we're going to scrape this screen by pressing F10. So you would press the F10 key and it would pull back all this information based off invoice entry or uh, receipts entry or depending on what screen you're in. in for example, we use it very much in our accounting software. And again, you can grab you can grab a lot of data off of these screens. It's not totally automatic, but it'll save you a ton of time. You can get like invoice line numbers and and total invoice amounts. So if days. you, I mean, if you have an index, if you have a batch of 50 invoices, and all you have to do is press F10 index, F10 index, that is going to be a lot faster than having to type in maybe six values on each invoice. Mm -hmm. And then barcoding. So barcoding is a wonderful thing that's been around for a very long time. Um, you can read keywords. You can identify a document type with a barcode. You can use it to separate pages. Um, you could use patch codes also to separate pages instead of having to do that manually. Mm -hmm. um, barcodes and patch codes kind of use the same technology to, um, to differentiate what they are. Um, it, it provides a very fast and accurate way of indexing documents. So, um, and like I said before, you could bring in just one value and then use an autofill to populate the rest of it. And lots and lots of our customers are doing that. I mean, what's, what's the best way to get your documents indexed? I mean, wouldn't it be great if your document already knew all of its indexing information? You could just read it off the document? Well, that's what barcodes do. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quicker and it's more accurate than trying to do OCR. Uh, well, I mean, in a lot of cases, of some, some of you may um, send out your invoices to your customers with barcodes already on them. So. It's just a matter of reading that barcode, mm -hmm. and then um, time really time you did time. nothing but scan the document, and everything else is done for you. Yep. And then autofill keyword sets. Um, these are very wonderful uh, pieces or ability to get data back. Um, we've been doing a lot more external autofills, which allow you to um, pull data from external systems using usually a DNS connection of some sort, ODBC, and um, it allows you to fill in real-time information. So if you are, for example, everything is being entered in a different system and somebody changes their name and you get documents in later in the day, and you go to scan those, they will then have that new information right away because you pull them from an autofill. If, if you didn't do that, then maybe they would have the wrong information because it hadn't been updated yet. Yeah. The only, the only real advantage that a, a normal autofill keyword set has over an external autofill keyword set, it really is speed. Uh, if you have data, you have a lot of data that you know isn't going to change, like, say, 
states in the United States. Probably not going to change. Uh, that, that would be a good candidate for an internal autofill keyword set versus an external autofill keyword set. So you're not trying to hit an external database every time you try and get, well, is that is WI Wisconsin or is that you know, mm -hmm. Wyoming? Better not to ask the external database. Just grab it from the fast internal on basis database. All right, and then we've got advanced capture. So advanced capture is basically allows you to capture information automatically off of a document. So it will, you will bring in the document, and generally you set these up as forms. You set up a form um, extraction, and you tell it exactly what you want it to extract, invoice number, name, vendor name, vendor number, whatever information on that um, document that you would like it to extract, you set that up. <clears throat> you use predefined forms and rules. So basically, you would give it, for example, you would tell it that this is where the invoice number should be, and it should always be numbers. You don't want to ever see letters there. So you give it these these rules and these predefined on these predefined forms, and then when you bring them in, it will automatically bring in that data for you, which is much more accurate and much faster than manually data entering. Yeah, so you set up a template for one of these document types, like an invoice or something again, uh, and you, you define some anchor points that tell it where the corners of the image are, depending, you know, because you bring it in with a scanner, it's never always in the same place, because mm -hmm. um, it does it, it does rely on it being in the same place. But if you set up some anchor points in the document, it can figure out that, okay, so the document shifted over a little. My, you know, my reading zone is going to be here instead. Uh, and it can grab, it can grab a lot of data, including repeating line data, even off of uh, invoices and other AP documents. And um, it's simple drag and drop configuration, so, um, which is very helpful and very easy to configure. And um, a note to make here is that the volume is unlimited, because um, in a second here I'm going to talk about AnyDoc, and that is a little bit different. Um, so there's a lot of different options. If, if automatic extraction of data is something you're looking for, um, that's something we can work with you to discuss what would be your best option. Um, because there's also AnyDoc, which is um, recently purchased by Highland. And they have a, like a, a suite of products that does the form processing and the OCR and the data capture and data classification. Um, so it is very similar to what Advanced Capture does, but theirs is charged based off of volume. So depending on the types of documents or what you're looking to bring in and extract, um, one might be a better solution versus the other, um, cost-wise and what you're trying to accomplish. So um, with that said, if this is something that you're looking at doing, um, you can contact us. Um, we, also, we also have Brainware, which is another engine that does forms processing and OCR and data capture. Um, and I did see a couple of our um, customers on this webinar this morning that actually have data, that have Brainware. And so that is also another option we have for um, bringing in documents and extracting data straight off those documents. Mm -hmm. And um, the CineDoc solution can release to OnBase as well as release to other third-party systems, depending on what you want to do with the data. Maybe you want to, maybe it's, um, it's valid information or survey information because it reads OMR, you know, and OCR data. So maybe it's a ballot or a survey, and you just want to calculate the results of that survey. We could send it to a database where you could then calculate those results. So that's another thing that AnyDoc could do. Now I'm going to turn it over to Andy, and he's going to talk about retrieval. All right. So retrieval. How, how do you automate retrieval? But isn't, isn't retrieval when I'm, I'm looking for a document specifically? What, what's going on here? 
It's not automated retrieval. It's finding what you want to find faster. Uh, spending less time looking for your documents. That's, that's the key. Really, automation is just spending less time doing X. In this case, we're going to spend less time finding what you want. Uh, that can be fewer clicks or fewer keystrokes or filtering out any information that you're not actually looking for. Um, so you can do that with uh, custom queries. App Enabler can help you with that. Uh, DocPop and its new sister, PDF Pop are also really helpful for filtering out unneeded information uh, or getting the right information to the right people. So let's start with custom queries. They're custom. Custom queries, uh, their key function of OnBase is often overlooked. Uh, they allow you to eliminate repetitive information entry when you're retrieving documents. Um, you can You can get better control over both what you're looking for and the formatting of the results that come back. Uh, you can configure an unlimited number of custom queries. Uh, obviously, too many of them would be a little ungainly, but you're not actually limited by, limited by the number of custom queries you can make. Um, so a custom query basically allows you to, if you're always looking up the same document, all the time, and you always want them to come back in the same order, use a custom query. It's what they're designed for. Uh, you can query on a single document type, you can query on multiple document types. Uh, you can even do, you can even set up a static query that does custom SQL if you want. If you're looking for a really specific set of documents, maybe it's a set of documents that changes every month. So you're just going to look for the, the previous month's worth of whatever documents. You can set up a custom query based on keyword information. You can type in a couple of keywords, get your, get your documents back on multiple document types, format it in the correct format for what you're looking for. You can put those keyword types into an HTML form to make it look nice. Uh, you, can, you can use a custom query to query on your full text indexing that you're doing through Autonomy Idle. There's a whole bunch of options in custom queries, uh, and it's a really it's a really important tool in your arsenal if you if you've got users who are always looking up the same documents all the time. Definitely take a look into custom queries. All right, so application enabler. What can it do for you to reduce the amount of time you spend looking for a document? Uh, you can use AE to read data from an enabled, enabled app and then retrieve documents based on that data out of OnMakes. So say invoice numbers from SAP, insurance account numbers, uh, customer names, vendor names, whatever you have in an external program, an external database, you have a bunch of information and you have corresponding documents in OnBase you can use Application Enabler to very quickly, one keystroke, very quickly pull up documents related to that customer, to that invoice, to that whatever you're looking up in your external program. So DocPop. DocPop is interesting. Well, and... It doesn't, it doesn't quite fit into the whole automation thing, except there are some cool things you can do with it. Yes. Well, and it's not automated on the side of setting it up, but no. it is automated on the side of your users. Yes. So, um, yes, it's not for example... All, it's not at all automated yeah. to set up, but... <laughs> but, with that said, when documents are brought in, um, or links are created. So, if you are using... Um, a different system, for example, SAP, um, and you may have a link in there, and when you click on that link, and I believe those links actually are um, very similar in Epic, and you click on those links, it will then bring back the documents that are in OnBase, or a list of those documents, and then you can click on the document. And that's, you know, based off a dependent amount of um, Information. It depends what you set it up with. Um, exactly. Like, yep. say, it's invoice number, so it would bring back all the all the documents with that invoice number. Or 
um, in a lot of cases, it's really linked to one document, mm -hmm. and you would bring back the related document to whatever document you're looking at in SAP. So if you're looking at a payment of um, an invoice in SAP, you could click on the link and that would bring up the invoice that is associated with that payment. Yep, so this is it. very, very handy in a lot of different ways depending on um, your system. Yeah, if you've got external users that you either, you don't, you don't want them accessing OnBase, you don't want to deal with the security rights for OnBase, or you don't want to install on base software on their machines, or their, you know, their external users outside of your control, outside of your corporate control at all. Um, DocPop is a really good way to get the documents they need to be able to view to them. Uh, you can you can use DocPop to send individual documents. You can use it to send. Uh, it will also display a hit list uh, as the result of a custom query or a doc type query. Um, you can limit the number that comes back. Um, it's a really convenient way to get external non-OnBase users to see OnBase documents. Yep. Really convenient. And actually, there's a slightly more convenient way in the next slide, and that is PDF Pop, which does exactly what DocPop does, except instead of feeding the OnBase document to the, to the person who's viewing that URL, that link, uh, you get a PDF. OnBase will take the document, turn it into a PDF, and then spit it out to the person who's viewing the, the document. And because of that, you have no external software requirements whatsoever. Uh, you get an instant PDF rendition of it that you don't have to deal with renditions or revisions in your OnBase system. It just does it, which is fantastic. But it works in almost any browser. Chrome, Safari, I believe it works in the mobile browsers. Um, IE6, IE11, doesn't matter. It's just sending it a PDF. So you can you can get... And most everybody has a PDF reader on their workstation. Exactly. So. Yeah. Chrome has one built in. Firefox has one built in. Safari has one built in. Um, IE will use whatever's installed on the system. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a really, really terrific way to get documents out to external users without having to deal with any kind of software install. So there's one other thing I wanted to talk about, and uh, I kind of there's kind of an 800-pound gorilla in the room uh, when we're talking about all this automation, because um, we've talked about automating ingestion, we've talked about automating indexing, we've talked about automating retrieval. There's one really big thing though that you can automate. Uh, and that's workflow. Uh, and what workflow can help you automate um, is if you have business processes, just the things you do in your business that are currently manual, that are, involve documents, and you can get those documents into OnBase. You can take workflows, programmable business logic, and work. You know, and and the workflow. The, the logic, the cues, the, the life cycles, and all the operations you can perform on an on-base document. And you can come out of the other end of, of workflow with business process automation, which is what everyone's looking for, really. Yeah, and I mean, workflow has a lot of built-in. It's all point and click, and they, mm -hmm. they're coming up with more and more um, uh, rules and actions that you can do on documents every day. And we can do a lot of different things with these. And um, as some of you know that are already connected, we use workflow in your organizations a lot to move documents, to process, um, documents. process documents for approvals, for um, all sorts of different things. So this is a, a wonderful tool for automating processes within your business organization. And it is so much better than moving paper. So much better, yeah. <laughs> And unfortunately, there's so much you can do with it, we cannot at all talk about it today. Yes. <laughs> there's so much you can do with workflow. Yep. But I wanted to mention it because it really bears mentioning. You can really do some serious business process automation with workflow. Well, yeah. And then within workflow itself, you can set up timers, which is also automatic to have things done to documents. And you can also, um, if you have system tasks that are on the queue level, those things are also done automatically when a document gets to a queue. So 
there's a lot of automation that can be done. Yes, yes, and probably the most important kind of automation. Yes, <laughs> exactly. All right, so that's all we got. Yep, um, I'm just going to go over one more thing um, besides our basic ending slides. Um, you know, here's our blog, and um, there's always the Highland community. Um, I actually, it's on I, it is, it's just, just recently changed to onbase.com slash community. Um, so there's a lot of resources out there. They have a lot of information, a lot of forums, um, stuff to keep in mind um, moving forward. If you have any questions, I see we don't have any um, in the chat as of right now, but if you have any going forward, feel free to contact us at support at um, navian-inc.com. Um, here is our new, the latest versions of all of our software. Yep, so we're getting, we're getting real close to the release of 14. Yep. That's probably going to be our next webinar. Probably be our next webinar, yep, which um, I have here. But what I'm going to talk about, um, we never really go over this, and so I decided this time that it would probably be a good idea because we rewrote um, our website recently. Yeah, we have a new website. We have so. a new website. So I am going to um, go over where you find our information on our website. So here is um, Navient-Inc.com. And to get to our support stuff, you can either go to the About Us and go to Customer Portal. Ooh. Down here in the middle. Or you can scroll down to the bottom of the page, and then on the side over here by customers, there is customer portal. And both of these places will take you to the same screen. And as you can see here, you can create a software request. When you do that, that sends an email to us. Yep. Um, you can also just send us an email support to support at com. Yep. yep. Um, we also have chat. So you can click here and um, live chat with us if you have uh, a problem or a question. And if it's a quick question, maybe this is the easiest way to do it. Yep. Um, it shows us it's offline because 100% of customer care group is currently in this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So um, obviously when we're logged in, that will say online. Um, and then here are ours, 8 to 5, and then here's our phone number. and then. Here is the email, so you could always come in here and click here, and this will allow you to send us an email, too. Mm -hmm. And then um, our after-hours support number is also on this website. So um, just so as a from the front page one more time. All right. So if we go back to the home page, like I got there this time, go, or last time down here, but you could also go to the About Us, and go to Customer Portal. That will take you to all the information for us. Yep. So, and this also gives you the Move It site. If we've ever um, sent you information about downloading something, it would be from our Move It site. So if you lost the email um, with that address, you could always come out here and click this, which is another way to get to that information. So our next webinar, like I said, we'll be in July, and um, we're hoping to cover on base 14, which should be released by then. And then there is our Navient conference, which is October 13th and 14th this year at the Harley Museum in Milwaukee. We hope to see everyone there. And here again is all the same information that I just went over. So I hope everyone enjoyed our webinar today. And if you have any questions or any topics or suggestions, please feel free to send those to us so we can get them into the next webinar. And thank you again. Have a great day. Yes, bye-bye.